Today we're going to make this dead simple, super easy DIY patio table. All with inexpensive tools you can get from the home center, no fancy joinery, no welding, and today's video is sponsored by Scotch Extreme Vinyls. Check it. It's springtime, although it doesn't feel like it, but we need a patio table for our patio. So today I'm going to build one with nothing but simple tools that you can get from the home center. I'm going to start off by cutting this angle iron to length. I did get this from the home center, but a hot tip for you is if you can find it at a steel yard, it'll be about half the price. This is two inches wide and three sixteenths inches thick. I've got a cutoff wheel and my angle grinder and I've already gone ahead and marked my line on the angle iron. I like to score the line before cutting all the way through it gives a place for the cutoff wheel to fall into. I should also mention if you get the angle iron from a steel yard, they can also cut it down to size for you. So now I've got a flat disc in my angle grinder. It's basically a bunch of layers of sandpaper and I'm going to deburr and take off the sharp edges that we made here on the angle iron. So we have all four legs cut and now we need to drill the holes. I have them marked here with some paint marker. I'm going to use this step bit to drill our holes. I went ahead and primed and painted the legs so while they are drying I'm going to cut the apron for this table. I picked up some cedar from the home center. I chose cedar because it is very rot resistant which would be great for this outdoor table. This was kind of pricey at the home center. If you can pick this up at your local hardwood dealer it's going to be a lot cheaper. This has a rough side and a smooth side. I think the rough side is going to look really cool on this table with the angle iron legs. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you how I am going to use Scotch Extreme Vinyl to add some pop to this table. This stuff is great. It's made for extreme weather conditions from 40 below zero all the way up to 200 degrees and is perfect for a project such as this. It's fade tested, washable and water resistant, which means you could use this for automotive applications and decals. What I love about it is it conforms to curved surfaces. So I could add some sweet graphics to my racing helmet or let people know what year my Impala is. I have a vinyl cutter that is pretty popular in the scrapbooking world, which I use to easily cut these out. And of course you can cut these Scotch Extreme Vinyl by hand, which is what I'm going to do for this patio table. Scotch Extreme Vinyl is purposely made thin to allow stretching to get in all those nooks and crannies. This is not your ordinary vinyl. This has pressure sensitive technology for easy and precise placement. They call it glide into place technology and won't stick until you want it to. If you have ever tried to apply vinyl before, you are probably aware of air bubbles and how frustrating they can be. Scotch Extreme Vinyls are designed with an air channel release to eliminate air bubbles. These tiny micro air channels allow air to flow through as you are firmly a applying pressure to secure your vinyl to a surface for a bubble free application. How cool is that? Ready to change up your design? Scotch Extreme Vinyls remove easily and cleanly. The colors are bright and vivid and there's a variety to choose from. If you're a DIYer, artist, or crafter, you're going to want to incorporate Scotch Extreme Vinyls into your projects. Developed over decades by 3M, the company people trust for full vehicle wraps and building decals. Want to know more? There'll be a link down below in the description. Now we're going to head back outside into the cold to finish up this patio table. Got the circular saw set to 45 degrees, so I got two long sides to cut and two short sides. I'm using my square to guide my circular saw through the cut. And I noticed on the first one, as I was trying to hold it down, it was sliding on me. So this next one, I'm going to clamp my square to the board. That way I don't have to hold this down and I can control the circular saw with my hands. Look what I did. This is the board that I screwed up and I've got an angle going this way and oops, this one's going the wrong way. You got to keep your head in the game. So another quick lesson that I learned is if I just have my board hanging over the side of my workbench here and I cut it off, it wants to split and break. What I've done is I grabbed a couple of bricks to raise this up. And so now both pieces are supported to the bench and it won't flip and, and break on me. Now I got two boards equal length with no breaks and my angle's going the right way this time. Now I'm going to route a rabbit along the inside of all four pieces. So I have this in a set of clamps and then I have those clamps clamped down to my workbench and I've got a quarter inch rabbiting bit in my router. So I'm gonna cut a quarter inch rabbit, a quarter inch deep. Be 
Before we start assembling this, I wanna put a coat of varnish on there. That way I don't have to assemble it, pull it all apart. Get, I wanna get varnish in all the nooks and crannies. So I'm going to use this Total Boat Marine Grade Varnish, which is made for the marine, which is outdoors in the water, which is where this table's gonna be. It's just, it's gonna float in the ocean. My, my patio ocean. Us YouTubers, we make so much money that we can just have patios in the ocean. That's, that's just how it is. I have my boards in this little corner clamp here just to hold them together. And I'm going to hold this up here, drill in, and then we're gonna bolt all that together. Son of a just realized. So I drew this up on the computer, making sure I wouldn't make any kind of measurement mistakes. And I drew everything up on the computer except for where to position these holes. I just decided that should be good right here. I actually would not be able to get a nut on the other side because the bolt would be positioned here. I should have drilled the holes out here further. And so it would go in there like so. And since this angle iron was crazy expensive, I'm just going to flip this upside down. This bottom one is gonna get covered with a foot. That is going to be a decorative hole. And then we're actually going to drill new holes where they should be so I can make this work. This was supposed to be a super easy project. It'll be easy for you because I went through all the mistakes that you won't have to go through. So for the feet on these guys, I found these little rubber things on Amazon that are made just for angle iron. Uh, ignore the hole. I make mistakes so you don't have to. Because my simple little brain can't deal with mistakes, I went ahead and filled the holes with epoxy. I repainted everything, drilled new holes. It is the next day. This was supposed to be a one day project. It is what it is. I want to keep this project as simple as possible. Under normal circumstances, I would probably pocket hole these two guys together. I'm just going to attach them to the legs here. So I'm gonna hold this up here and I'm gonna drill my four holes and then we're gonna put nuts and bolts through there. That is gonna be our table base. And this is starting to look good. It's also slightly warmer than it was yesterday by two degrees. So we got one corner done. There's a slight gap in the top there. I'm not worried about gaps. This isn't fine woodworking. This is a DIY project. So now we're just gonna do the next corner and repeat. And that is a table. Somehow it's level and it doesn't wobble. Uh, that's, that's awesome. So now we're gonna go inside and we're going to make the glass top for this. This is the part I'm really excited about because it's really gonna set off this table and add some color and character to it. We are back in the warm shop, thank goodness. This is the part where I get to colorize it and I'm going to use the Scotch Extreme Vinyl. I had a local glass company cut some, wait, did you know that Toledo is the glass capital of the world? Lots of glass artists here in Toledo. This is a quarter inch thick and it is six by 20. Now you can cut glass yourself, but the reason I had them cut it for me is so they could polish the edges. So it's, it's, it's nice to the touch. We are going to colorize this with some Scotch Extreme vinyls. And the cool thing about this is if I don't like it, I can just change it. That's the, and, and if you don't like the colors, if you don't like the colors that I choose, you can change it. I'm just gonna do solid blocks of color. Line up my glass on here. Cool thing about this is you can reposition it and it doesn't permanently stick until you put pressure on it. So you don't have to worry about bubbles because it allows it to breathe and you can squeeze out any, any bubbles. So this is something that I want to show. This is the side with the Scotch Extreme vinyl and I got all the, all the bubbles out. Now we look underneath on the, so now you're seeing the adhesive side, but there's no sign of adhesive. There's no bubbles whatsoever in there. How cool is that? So if you're using this on windows, it looks great from both sides. I've done this color combination before on this table. There's just something about the yellow, orange, red, black that I absolutely love. Just it has that, that 80s childhood vibe. So let's go take these out to the table for the big reveal. Vinyl side down, glass side up. 
I did get one extra piece of glass in case of disaster. And then the last one. The reason this is in six different panes is so when water hits this, it can it has a place to go and just doesn't sit on top. I am super thrilled with the way this came out. Again, if you don't like my color scheme, you could do whatever you wanted. I tried to keep this as simple as possible for the weekend warrior. If you have any suggestions on how to make it even more simple, please let us all know down in the comments. That'll be super helpful. If I was going to do this again and I wasn't worried about being super simple, I would probably pocket hole the four corners together or use some sort of mitered spline and that would eliminate the tiny little gaps that I have here in the corners. I think I would also route the rabbit after assembling everything instead of pre-assembling. That way I could really get a nice tight fit with the glass. If you route it afterwards, you will have to chisel out the corners because a round spinny thing can't make 90 degree angles. I want to put little rubber feet on the bottom so this doesn't slide around. Uh, one option is actually to use a little bit of hot glue. Over on Patreon, I have a show called Sundays with Dave. It's a behind the scenes show and I answer all of your questions and we talk about what I'm working on and, and some of the struggles that I'm going through while filming these. Things that you don't see in this particular video. Thank you to Scotch Extreme Vinyls for sponsoring today's video. That is going to wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.